My grandfather would say, today reveals what we did in the past, but the future will reveal what we've done today. He had a really strong work ethic, but he was a very gentle man as well. He had a very compassionate side. He was described as being eccentric to the point of mad because he was aging whiskies for way longer than anybody else was. But he had a belief, a strong belief. In 1933, at the age of 14, the same age as his father had been when he started, George Urquhart was to come into the business. Now Gordon MacPhail would have these wonderful casks through its importation of sherries and ports and Madeiras who would then fill them when you spit it. Now this is something George was to continue, and this was his passion, this careful selection of the casks to meet the spirit character. And that was George's legacy in many respects, how he really understood that relationship between cask and oak, but based on his relationships with the people. It's no exaggeration to say that George Urquhart is the father of the modern interest in malt whiskey. He made available single malt whiskies not only in this country but also in Europe when the whole market was dominated by blended scotch. Hugely influential in the industry and in the history of scotch whiskey as well. One of the old school, gentlemen of the trade, of which sadly there are fewer and fewer nowadays. You know, your word was your bond and handshake was good enough. He certainly put a collection of single malts that nobody else could in front of overseas people. Whiskies that had never been heard of before. They came over to Elgin, put a bell at Gordon McPhail, and they met Mr. George. Started selecting casks, and there were something incredibly different, great. They gave opportunities to people to try different whiskies, to ex experiment, to taste. Without him, the whisky would not be at this stage, at this level now. You never saw whiskies over sort of 15 years, maybe, if you were lucky, 21. But he took it a step further, you know, into 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, now 60 years, 70 years. He laid down stocks, not just for a few years, but for many years. Not just in Bourbonwood, but he was using sherry casks. Sherry casks, which are very much part of the norm to this day. And when we toast these rare stocks of 50, 62 years old, we must salute him. Because thanks to his entrepreneurial spirit, they're here today. But more importantly, they're here today for us to enjoy, not just in Scotland, but around the world. October 2019 would have seen George turn 100. We celebrate and commemorate his contribution to the whisky industry and his life in the best way Gordon McPhail know how, to do a commemorative bottling. It's a cask that was laid down in 1956, matured at Glen Grant, which George had really strong relationships with the owners. It's a single bottling and it's only given us 235 bottles, which makes it exceptionally scarce. I think you'll be very proud of this one.